Is your garden a mess? So is mine. I'm going to take on a little tour today. Ready? You're going to be impressed. Here we go. <laughs> garden fork. Making things, making food. If I can do it, you can do it. Let's start out on a positive note. Well, let's just be upfront about this. Um, I am always have this ambition to have this amazing vegetable garden. Like you, right? Yeah, like me. And then modern life intrudes, is that the word? Invades? Modern life gets in the way. Both. And so we have some successes and failures. And I thought I'd just kind of, let's walk through it and show you a success first, okay? Yep. Success. Tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes. My neighbor grows cherry tomato seedlings and gives them to us. And that's a burst of summer, a burst of sunshine. I think it was a burst of stem too. I didn't get any of the stem. <laughs> I did want to point out our tomato cages, which I, I made once and I use for years. I have several videos about this I'll link at the end, but it's my favorite tomato cage. It's kind of triangular. It's sturdy. There is one video where I almost poked my eye out. That's pretty good to watch too. <laughs> you gave away the surprise. But this is this bed's been fairly successful. I ran out of wood chips because the wood chips are literally right down the road. So I just put wood chips around the base here. And it's interesting to see what popped up in the interim is kale from last year came up over here. Oh yeah. Wow. Uh, Chip and Marty gave me these. They have little, uh, like, kind of like black shoulders on them. I'm looking forward to this. This is, this is a good thing. These will be fun to eat. You're not orange or red. They're kind of green and black, and it's like the rainbow plant. I like that. Sugar snap peas, these aren't really a fail. These just burn out in the heat, and we have a heat wave going on. But these were delicious while they were going, weren't they? All of us eat them. And uh, the Labradors like sugar snap peas. <laughs> I didn't plant these while it was snowing. People say you can do that. It never works for me. I have to wait for the soil to be kind of unfrozen. But these came up nice. It's just like they never make it into the kitchen. We eat them. It's true. Off the vine. Super simple trellis. We have a video about this as well. String works, you know. This is a tomato plant I got for free. The the farmer's market was giving away free vegetable plants that they, they couldn't sell, you know, it's past their prime. And I put this in anyway. I was like, I, I put it in real deep. Maybe it'll grow some potatoes, but it was free. I think you said tomato before. Oh, potatoes. <laughs> Sorry. But over here. Oh, I, much better. These I grew from tubers I ordered. Um, I'll link below. I'll, I'll put the text right here. I can't remember who I got them from, but they're really nice people. Uh, two, I got a red and a yellow here, and they're doing really well. I already hilled them. I might hill them again. We'll see how robust they get. Aren't they from someplace in Maine? I don't remember. <laughs> we'll fill in the blank. I'll fill in the blank down here. They have good postcards. These were free. Uh, again, at the uh, market near us where they sell uh, plants and stuff, this was in the free pile, and I transplanted them here, so we're going to have really nice cutting sunflowers because somebody likes those. Even <laughs> cooler is right here. Oh, purslane. Purslane is self-seeded. This self-seeds all over my garden. I just let it grow because... He eats it. This is high in omega-369s, and you put it in your salads or soups. Can you cook it? In our neighborhood in Brooklyn, we have a huge Latino population. They sell this at the vegetable stand. They use this in their soups. So do you. It's good. What are you eating? Oh dear. So this was kind of a fail. Um, this is a garlic bed I planted almost in winter. I made a video about it. I'll link at the end. And it almost barely germinated, but a couple of garlic came out of it. And they're, eh. eh, they're mediocre. Then a lot of plants go out. But this is one of the beds I did the wood chip method. and. The weed control, I left it really hands off to see what would happen. You still have to weed a wood chip bed, the back to Eden method gardening. But the flip side is the bed right next door here Ooh. of garlic did much better. This is another garlic bed. I planted it in the fall, wood chipped the whole thing and kind of let it go. And we got a pretty good harvest here. These aren't huge, 
but this gets shaded by this apple tree, so I might have to work on that. But I took off all the um, scapes to send energy back to the bulbs. But I thought what was interesting is I wanted to see how much uh, weeds pop up, and they do pop up, so you need to be pretty proactive. <laughs> As if that were a test. Weeds happen. <laughs> but we got garlic. It smells like garlic from here. I'll link to garlic videos at the end. So. so two different garlic plants. This one I took the scape off. This one I didn't. Scape removed, scape not removed. Ooh. We learn. This is not a fail. This is a learning experience. And if you don't fail, you don't learn. <laughs> this is the lettuce that kind of uh well it got really hot and then it bolts it so like hot. Uh, i will replant this in the fall with some cold hardy greens mustards work really well here the flip side is our string beans they're a little hot because it's hot here but the string beans are doing quite well a couple of months less than a month i hope we'll have some uh they're called uh, rattlesnake pole beans. I really like them. Kale? Kale's doing great. Last year I had a uh, cabbage looper, cabbage loppers. We're decimating this. And then this year it's super robust. It's looking a little beat up because of the heat. It's like 100 out. <laughs> yeah, but it's 100 out here right now. But this, you can overwinter this. We have some uh, mini greenhouse hoop house designs uh, in our video library. You can check those out. Overwinter food, it's a beautiful thing. Sometimes I just like to raise flowers because someone in my life really likes flowers. <laughs> my neighbor gave us dahlia tubers. They haven't bloomed yet, but these things, they look almost like a potato plant. They do. And they're doing really well. He also gave us some other bulbs, which I can't remember the name of right now. Um, and they have a nice flower too. We're gonna find out really soon because they're about to bloom. There's a ton of them. And then some volunteer sunflowers came up and I got two cool things to show you at this end of that bed. This is a tennis ball that got hit by the lawnmower. <laughs> but this is Cardoon, which is a member of the artichoke family. And we got this for free at the nursery. They were giving away again, plants that didn't sell and it's kind of the end of the planting season. So I put four of these in and that was cool. Another tennis ball. You know, a lot of those around here. Charlie, come here. It's hot. Another super success here is this bee bomb. This bed we finally weeded last year, got rid of a lot of stuff that was crowding out the bee bomb. And this year the bee bomb has just taken off. Very cool. You can make a tea out of this, by the way. Are there bees in it? Uh, no, but their hummingbirds are in it a lot. So. So why don't you and I continue our time together here? There should be a video floating right here, kind of Eric's journey in gardening. I'd like you to come along on my journey. We can share this together. Click right there. I'll see you in the next video. Am I coming on your journey too? You always do. <laughs>